All right, public, uh, ooh, do I want a class? Do I want a struct? What's a record? Well, buckle up, because hopefully at the end of this video, you've got a better understanding of each and when you might want to use them. Now, most things you watch or read are going to tell you that classes are reference types that are stored on the heap, structs are value types that are stored on the stack, but that's not always true. And in reality, where those things are allocated or deallocated really shouldn't matter to you. Now, you could say that value types on the stack are faster than reference types on the heap, but for the majority of apps, where your variables are allocated and deallocated from is probably not one of the places that are causing you performance bottlenecks. More than knowing like where it's allocated and deallocated from, what you really want to know is that a class is a reference type while a struct is a value type. Now, what's a reference type and a value type? Well, it's pretty obvious by their names. One gets passed by reference and one gets passed by value. Now, I know that's confusing. So let's talk about what that means. When I pass a value type, I'm passing a copy of the object or value itself. And when I pass a reference type, I'm not actually passing the object. I'm passing a reference to that object. Now that may not be too clear, so let's look through some code. Looking at this, I create a struct called GeoPoint. It's a value type, so it's gonna get passed by value. And I create a location one with its latitude and longitude. Then I declare location two to be equal to location one. Now, because it was passed by value, location two is not the same object as location one. They are two distinct objects that will just look the same at this point. But you'll notice I then changed the latitude of location two. I then console log out those objects. What does the console say? Well, you'll see. I changed the latitude on location two, and they are both distinct objects. So location one returns the original. Location two returns the new version. The thing to recognize here is that when we passed it, it was by value. So it was a copy of the original. So we have two distinct objects. So changing one doesn't affect the other. To contrast that, let's look at a reference type. Instead of a struct geo point, I've made a class person with first name and last name. Now you can see I declared person one with a very clever name. And then we declare person two to be the same as person one. And then just like in our previous example, we change some properties on person two. And then we'll wrap it up with console logging those two people to see what we get. What the what? When I changed person two, it actually changed person one. That's because a class is a reference type. And when we pass it, when we make a copy of it, it's not a copy. It's a copy of the reference to that object, basically in memory. That means we didn't really create a copy of person one. We basically just created two different names for the same thing. Let's bring this example into the real world so that we can maybe understand it a little more clearly. We'll start with a struct, a value type that's passed by value. Let's say we have a bald bearded builder struct that we name BBB. But now we want another bald bearded builder to be the same, but we want to call it Mike. Well, and there we go. Now we've got two bald bearded builders that have their own bald head, bearded face, and can be building separate things. If I then say, hey, you know what? That Mike bald bearded builder, I want him to have hair. Look, BBB ball bearded builder did not get hair. Only Mike, because we're two different objects. And so now let's talk about reference types. We are, do you have something else? Could, could you go do something? We're, we're done with you. You can go. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Okay, so now we're going to have a ball bearded builder class, which is a reference type and gets passed by reference. We'll call it BBB. But again, we come up and we say, hey, we want another bald bearded builder, but we want to call it Michael. What happens when we create a new one? You just give the same bald bearded builder a different name. That's because what you're passing is the reference, the reference to the same object in memory. So I can call it Mike and I could call it BBB, but regardless of what I call it, it's the same bald bearded builder. So if we decided that, hey, we want BBB to shave his beard, well, then I'm not going to do that. But if I had, both Mike and BBB would now be beardless. Another difference in how structs and classes behave is when it comes to equality. Let's go back to this geo point struct. When we're comparing the equality of those two geo points, even though they're two separate things, it's comparing their types and their property values. And notice we didn't even copy it this time. These are two distinct objects that we created from scratch. But when we run that code, they both compare equal. 
And again, by contrast, when we use that person class, even though we create person one and two with the same values, when we compare their equality, it comes back false. That's because it's comparing the reference, not the actual values and properties. Now there are ways you could change and override that behavior, but we're talking just out of the box here. So when should I use each? Well, generally you're gonna just wanna use classes. But what are the exceptions that make a struct more suitable? First, if the instance of that type is primarily short-lived or embedded in another object. Two, if it logically represents a single value like a primitive type. Three, if its instance size is smaller than 16 bytes. Four, if it's immutable. And then finally, if it's not boxed frequently. If it doesn't meet those criteria, you probably want to use a class. Oh, Michael, we've talked a lot about classes and structs and reference types and value types, but you still haven't mentioned records. We're going to cover that. Basically, records are classes, although you can have a record struct, and we'll cover those. And I want to go over some of the benefits of records, but if you want a more exhaustive explanation about records, you can click on that video up there where we dive a little bit deeper. Now, my favorite thing about records is all of the built-in methods that come with them. Methods for printing, methods for deconstruction. And even though they're a class and a reference type, their quality is based on values like a struct or value type. Check out this code to see how it works. We create that record of a person instead of a class. We construct those two things. And now when we compare them, our quality equals true, which is really nice. You kind of get the best of both worlds there. Another nice thing is, while you can write these with that longer syntax of a class, this shorter syntax makes this object immutable by default. No need to use get init accessor methods to make it that way. And that gets us into why you should use them. Objects that are immutable are an obvious first choice. Things coming in from an HTTP request, like an API call, data transfer objects, good choices for a record. But if your object needs to be mutable, that's a bad choice for a record. You probably want to stick with a class there. And what about the record structs we promised to talk about? Well, here's an example. To get one, you just basically have to add the struct keyword to it. One key difference though, is they're not immutable by default, but you can add the read only modifier to make them so. And if you still like the longer syntax, you can use that as well and just set those to get and it if you still want immutability. But all the other requirements for choosing a struct still apply to record structs. One thing I wanna note though, is they're faster than regular structs because they don't use reflection. And if you don't have a particular need, you might wanna just use record struct instead of struct moving forward. Hopefully this is giving you a refresher about things you already knew or laid a little bit of foundation for you to continue learning C-sharp. Until next time.